Good morning everybody. Thursday morning, coming up to the end of the week. Tomorrow I've got the dentist and um, going to see Alfie shortly. Then tomorrow the dentist, um, after see Alfie then and on Saturday and then um, I don't see Alfie on Sunday. I'll see him on Monday. And then we're off to Wales on Tuesday um, for my grandson's graduation. So my son will be uh, staying over at my house, um, as he always used to do when I had the dog. So at least I know that the house isn't unattended, which uh, is a big deal for me. On Tuesday, this is why I wanted to make this video yesterday and I didn't get the opportunity to do so. On Tuesday morning, a small grocery store near where my friend lives and near where one of my brothers live was held up at gunpoint. When my friend went to get her little bits and pieces of shopping. She was for fortunate not to walk into the gunmen. The gunmen! There were armed police there. It was all cordoned off. And the female shop assistant, who my friend has known for about 20 years, simply from going into that store, the female shop assistant had been rushed off to hospital um, unconscious she had been hit on the head pretty hard it would appear by the barrel of a gun and they knocked her unconscious last i heard was yesterday morning um from my friend who said she thought that um this lady was going to be okay, but I don't know, and I would ask you all to keep her in your in your prayers. I don't know the name of the the woman, just that she's a middle aged lady doing a job, you know, working nine to five or six till six or whatever hour she does scraping a living on probably minimum wage living a decent life and these thugs break in why not just take what they want like they beat my son up some time back badly and the lady shop assistant who was there working with my son had her on the floor pulling chunks of her hair out. Well, this time, whether it's the same gang or the same interlocking community of criminals, I don't know. They've gone one step further this time and beat a woman unconscious with the barrel of a gun. It's impossible to imagine the mindset of these individuals, isn't it? They all want something for nothing. We see a lot of that on YouTube, but people don't go out bashing other people to get it. You know, the scamming's bad enough, but this is something else altogether. Excuse me. <clears throat> so this lady, this wife, this mother, this grandmother is in hospital and although she might be physically okay and there goes my bell excuse me sorry everybody 
<coughs> that was um, a parcel for my son. It's his birthday tomorrow. Um, my son, my eldest son's birthday tomorrow, and my elder brother's birthday tomorrow, and Alfie's best friend's birthday tomorrow. That's three of them. Yes, but going back to what I was saying, this lady working for a minimum wage, trying to make a decent living, lead a decent life. She has a family, children, grandchildren, and whilst the hospital might be well able, touch wood, to um, repair the physical wounds, the psychological trauma is going to go much, much deeper. And that has never happened to me. And you, over the head, I was mugged once. I was mugged <coughs> walking along the canal bank. Just a little bit of peace and quiet, you know. Maybe I was stupid. Um, this is going back many, many years ago, about 20 years ago now. And walking along the canal bank summer afternoon you'd think you'd be safe somebody mugged me took my um purse i left my bag on the floor took my purse and i think there was only uh, very little in it didn't have much money in it but what they did when they mugged me um and thankfully it was seen by people who were sitting outside in their gardens banking, uh, backing down on the canal um door again um what happened was this dog knocked me into the canal thankfully there were people there to come to my aid and to get me out my way of coping with that i suppose as it's been to coping with a lot that's gone on in my life is to block it out it's sort of selective amnesia, if you like. And I think that with this lady, maybe that's the way, the route that she's going to have to follow. <coughs> because how does one come to terms with thugs? I don't know how many of them there were. Big men, you know, big men beating a woman up with a gun, pistol whipping her, isn't that a phrase? If perchance any of that ilk happens to see this video or one of their friends or family happen to see this video, which I doubt but you never know, You really are trash. You be low trash. I wouldn't even put you in landfill. You know, I like to show love. I like to show tolerance. But my love and my tolerance, it's a real challenge when it comes to people like you. Because all you do is cause and perpetuate misery. That woman is going to be suffering. Her family is certainly going to be suffering at a sort of what if. What happened is bad enough, but what if? It said that... <coughs> Human beings, I don't know who did this little bit of magic re magical research, but it said that human beings have about 60,000 thoughts a day. 60,000. It's hardly, it's hardly imaginable, is it? 
So of these 60,000 thoughts, <coughs> oh, I do apologise to my sore throat all the time. <coughs> of those 60,000 thoughts, how many are decent thoughts? in the minds of these thugs. Are they even conscious of what they're thinking? And it's not just them, is it? It's all the criminals. I know I've been reading about the Ninth Circle, I've been reading about the paedophile ring of the elites of the Ninth Circle. Why Pope Benedict was actually forced to resign. Why the uh, arrest warrants out for Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. What happened to the Aboriginal children that they took on a picnic in 1964, never to be seen again. It's Buckingham Palace's policy, never explain, never complain. But if 10 children went missing whilst under the care of the Queen and Prince Philip, who took them on a picnic and they never returned to that school and they were never seen again, and there are rumours about paedophilia Prince Philip is being called the Black Prince for all the crimes he has committed over the years. Um, prior to marrying Princess Elizabeth, being involved in heroin trafficking and paedophilia. Are these things true? I don't know. But where there's smoke, there is usually a flickering of a fire of a flame. Prince Andrew himself and his friendship with Jeff Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein <coughs> the paedophile in the US. A young woman has come out and said that as a minor she was abused by Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew is saying it was consensual. Buckingham Palace are denying it happened altogether. Never complain, never explain. I think as these people are on the payroll, on the civil list, as we are paying them to sit there looking glamorous, doing very little except cutting tape and signing papers, I think they do have an explanation, not least to the people of Canada. I'm linking up the mindset of these people from the higher ups who commit crime and they're not accountable for it, they're not held accountable. Edward Heath, our one time Prime Minister. He had a predilection for young boys, young boys. Jimmy Savile used to procure these children from residential homes and take them onto Heath's yacht. I think it was called the Morning Cloud. There are eyewitnesses who said some of these boys were murdered and held overboard when Heath had finished with them. Certainly, they were never seen again. Tony Blair, a regular visitor <coughs> to the Elm Guest House, where children were available to abuse. Tony Blair brings a whole, whole new relevance to the Blair the Blair Witch report, doesn't it? 
Cecil Smith. That balloon of a man who used to rape little children. It's all come out in the wash, all the dirt. Well, not all of it, a lot of it has. How much longer is this going to go on from the higher ups who are no better than the lower downs because they've all got that criminal mindset, all of them. Because they've got money doesn't make them a better person. Because they've got money, because they've got a certain status through a bloodline doesn't make them a better person just as it doesn't make the gun-wielding scum at the bottom of the pile better people. The only thing different in the mindsets of these scum is that the wealthy, the elite, don't need money. They do it purely for pleasure. Sexual pleasure because they're sadists. In some cases, they're also masochists. The lower down scum, their primary objective is to get money from the cashier desk, cigarettes and alcohol, maybe a leg of lamb or a chicken. And then add a little bit of spice and pleasure, sadistic pleasure, by beating up the shop assistants, in this case, an elderly lady. I can't comprehend it. I can't compute it. I saw somebody, name of Alexis, I don't know who you are. <coughs> commented on someone's video saying about me and she couldn't understand why I had a problem with anything that would be going on with people in the US um, who are scamming other people. And a lady replied to her because Anne knew of somebody who was ripped off for quite a large amount of money. That's true. And I knew of some, no, somebody's daughter whose mother was ripped off sending money to a no account in the US. Money that was spent on DVDs and God knows what, Dollar Tree stuff. Money from that lady's pension. Does it have anything to do with me? Yeah, it does. And I'll tell you why. It has something to do with everybody, as does what's happened to this lady in the UK, as what ha what's happening with the Ninth Circle, as what's happening with the elites. Something to do with everybody. Because every thought, every action is preceded by a thought. And every thought and every action reverberates around the world. It adds, if you like, to the clouds that surround us. Every man's suffering 
touches me and it should touch you. Every man's joy touches me as it should touch you. Every time someone is hurting, it touches me. And every time a child cries out in the night, I think of my own children. As you should think of yours and your grandchildren, of them being safe while other little children are being abused. Consciousness. Our thoughts, our actions expand. Maybe the next big bang will be because the world is so full of hatefulness, of sadness, of sorrow, that it just can't cope with it all. We have the top 1% in the country. We have the Queen, who at a stroke could wipe out poverty. The Pope, who at a stroke could wipe out poverty. Instead, they live in the lap of luxury. They sit on their golden thrones. They imbibe champagne and caviar, proverbially. While the children, children scrabbling for the last, the last green leaf on a plant. Thought for today. What you think and what's in your heart expands. If you've got love, if you've got joy in your heart, if you've got caring for others, if you can pray and have a clear conscience about praying, that will expand. It will certainly expand in your own world. I wish you joy, I wish you happiness. And please pray for that lady I mentioned, that she recovers her physical health, certainly, but also that she recovers psychologically from the ter terrible, terrible trauma that's been inflicted upon her and her family. God bless, and I may be back later on. Bye-bye.